Dearly beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, welcome again. We continue with our series, Finding God, and we appreciate God for ever, ever keeping us, ever providing, and ever his favor resting upon us. And so every time that we meet and we are talking about God, it is energizing, it is reviving, it is revitalizing in our lives. And so we have a moment more to talk about what God has put on my heart. And we started on the book of Judges. We talked about uh, a few judges and we shall continue talking about a number of more judges. And in a series of finding God, these men and women that we talk about the judges, they led the people of Israel into finding God. And every time they were you know, faithful to God, there was peace, there was joy, there was comfort. But every time that they deviated from the love of God, they deviated from the care of God. The moment they deviated from the knowledge of God, there were issues that they encountered. And so this time we think about another well-known judge about why is he well-known? He's well-known because of what he said, because of what he did. And this man is called Gideon. I mean, not Gideon is the one that we looked at late after, I mean, before, but now we look at Jephthah. In vernacular, he is Yefsa. Jephthah was one of the judges in Israel. And we talked about judges as these men and women that God raised up to be charismatic leaders. They were military leaders that led Israel. And this was way back before the institution of kingship started in Israel. And so these men and women, we call them men and women because there were also women judges. We over talked about the judge that reigned in Israel for a very long time. And some writers have talked about her as someone who reigned in Israel for over a period of 40 years. And this is the judge, Deborah. And now Yefsa is one of them. Yefsa is one of the judges that reigned in Israel, that led people back onto the way. Because every time they deviated, whenever there was no judge, and God would raise up a judge, and the judge would bring them back on the way. And now before we talk about what he did, I just want us to read a few verses from the word of God that give us the background that lead to the judgeship of the man, Jephthah. And this one we're going to see it in the book of Judges, chapter 10, verses 6, and we shall read on to get the background and how Jephthah comes to become the judge to lead people into finding God again. And in verse 6, in the book of Judges chapter 10, that the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth, the gods of, As of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord and they did not serve him. Now forsaking means deviating, getting away from serving God. And in verse 7, the Bible said that, So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hands of the Ammonites. So the two nations that God sells the Israelites into, and why are they being taken into these nations? Is because of forsaking God. And so in verse 8, and they crushed and oppressed the people of Israel that year. For 18 years, can you imagine? For 18 years, they oppressed all the people of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is Gilead. And the Ammonites crossed the Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim so that Israel was severely distressed. You know, when the enemy comes, he can mean to, you know, to besiege you on every side and so that you get distressed. And so the people of Israel become distressed because the enemy was coming from every side. And you have ever been in a situation where, you know, challenges come from every side and again you get distressed. And so these people were in the same manner distressed uh, when the enemies came from everywhere. And verse 10, 
is what marks it out. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you because we have forsaken our God and have served the Baals. And now reading on from verse 10 on to verse 15, they are repenting. And so even in our Christian walk, repentance renews our relationship with God. And not only God, but even with another person that whom you have angered or some other person who has angered you. If the relationship has not flown so well, when you get back to the person and beat your chest, the Jews would beat their chest in repentance and say, God, forgive, God, forgive. And because um, they meant it, God would forgive them. They would find him again. And so these people cried and they pleaded with God because they had forsaken. They said we had forsaken you. And so we have sinned. So do to us whatever seems good to you. They pleaded with God. That is in verse 15. Do to us what seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. And meaning that when you pray and cry to God, he delivers and he saves. And so in verse 16, so they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord. And he became impatient over the misery of Israel. And this is when, when he became impatient over the misery of Israel, it is when the journey of salvation started again. That in chapter 11, that in chapter 11 comes Jephthah. So what the verses that we've been reading from verses 6 following in chapter 10 of Judges, we've just only been laying a foundation that Jephthah comes as a judge. And then let us see who is this man. And by the way, from the Hebrew language, every name, like I've already said before, I say it again, that every Hebrew name had a meaning. And the meaning of, the, of Jephthah is to open or to release. Meaning that these people of Israel have been enslaved by these foreign nations, the Philistines and the Amorites, Ammonites actually had it to be released. The Israelites had to be released and Jephthah comes on the scene. But look what happens to the man that now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior. And this is what is the point. The mighty warrior like Gideon was and this one is like Ehud was and many others. And, but he was the son of a prostitute. So he had an incompetence. He had a challenge. He had a challenge that he had been born of a, 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 a prostitute, a harlot. Gilead was the father of Jephthah. Now, in verse 2, and Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, these people drove Jephthah away and said to him, you shall not have an inheritance here in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Now, this Issues of chasing people away. Now, people chase others away. These days is a challenge. Issues of land, issues of property. Now, someone might think like it's beginning today, not at all. Look, they chased Jephthah away. They said, your inheritance is not here. You are a son of a prophet and something like that. So they chased him away. And so when we see people chasing others away, it is the wickedness of the heart. And so we ask God to change people's hearts so that actually this kind of thing will not happen. And when we read the story on, you discover that actually Jephthah becomes a very important person. You may look at somebody. You may demean someone. You may think that someone is a nobody, is a nothing. But what God has prepared, what God has prepared for somebody actually stands out. And this is what happened to the man Jephthah, having been chased away. And we have had people that, you know, that become saviors, people that become saviors of their families, of their relatives, of their, whatever it is, having been demeaned, having been distressed, having been uh, segregated earlier. And so we ask God that actually this kind of thing um, is not the right one to do, um, segregating and beating against others and things like that. But now Jephthah, becomes a very important man. And so Jephthah fled in verse 3 of chapter 11 and he's uh, from his brothers and while he was there, many, many things happened. But what we are interested in is when things changed, they had it call back Jephthah, come back, come back and be our leader. That's in verse 6. Come back and be our leader that we may fight against the Ammonites. Friends, Jephthah was a mighty warrior and Chased away 
but then he's called back. Now, when he comes back, there is a dialogue, which is an interesting dialogue that you needed to see in verses 7 to, I mean, following, following chapter 11. Now, this is something that actually teaches us great things. Teaches us greatly, ladies and gentlemen, that actually things might not go well. People might not treat you well. And you may be mistreated. But Jephthah actually leaves us a challenge also in our series of finding God, not holding on to the former grudges, not holding on to former misunderstandings. But Jephthah entered into a dialogue with his elders, the Gileadite elders, and eventually he agreed and came back to save them. And so, friends, it's something that I want to put also to us, that as we look at Look through the lives of these judges. Looking at the life of Jephthah, he becomes a judge. He becomes the leader of God's people. He did not hold on to the grudge that he had in the beginning, but he forgot all about that and came and stood together with the people of Israel. And so, friends, we are called upon not to hold on to what is the past, but to look at the situation. What is it wanting you to do now? Are you a son? Are you a father? Are you a daughter? Are you who? Sometimes there are children who are mistreated, but when they get, a, when they, they get better, they say, they mistreated me now. Jephthah is giving you a lesson. Or somebody, whoever has been mistreated, Jephthah gives you a lesson that he came back to stand with these people and praise the Lord. Now, one other thing that actually I wanted to mention about Jephthah is something that he did, something that he said, of course, actually well known for the vow that he made when he had assumed the leadership. The Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he became the leader and he led Israel into war against the enemy nations and there was going to be a victory. But then he made a vow to the Lord. But look at verse 29. Even before he made a vow to the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord had already come upon him. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah. That's his church, Judges chapter 11, verse 29. And he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and he passed on to Mizipah of Gilead. And from Mizipah of Gilead, he passed on to the Ammonites. Now he's doing the work, pray the Lord. Now in verse 30, Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, if you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out of my house, to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonites, shall I, shall be the Lord is, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Now this is the, this is something that actually, uh, that Jephthah is well known for. But listen to me, his background teaches us a lot, and his return, even after he was chased away, teaches us a lot, and this vow that he made also teaches us a lot, and that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And so even in our daily, you know, interactions in our work. So while I was reading about Jephthah, I just opened my hands and said, oh God, that what you did for Jephthah, will you do it for me? That actually the spirit of the Lord will come. And so that we are able to do greater things. And in, during our time, during our generation, we need God's power. We need God's anointing we need god is you know god is hand to rest upon us and so even when he made the he made the vow he had to fulfill and we are going to share a little bit about the vows but this is very very important and so about the life of jephthah that i'm talking about now i pray that god enables you that god helps you to pick a lesson from this man that offered himself given his Poor background, whatever it was, but God used Jephthah. Now, some few lessons. One, there is suffering that you may go through because of some other person's sin. There is suffering that you may go through when it is not actually your making, but another person did it, said it, acted it. And you are the one to suffer it. Now, Jephthah suffered the consequences of his mother. His mother, the Bible says that she was a harlot, she was 
the prostitute. And so the, the brethren in the family just just away because they said that his mother was a prostitute. Now, he became a reject. He became illegitimate because they were saying, no, his mother, his mother. But listen to me. This is important that you also learn that while you were a parent, Amen. That while you are someone that you might, whatever action that you do, might lead you to the suffering of another person. An innocent person suffering because of your action. So we ask God to help us. We who are parents, we who are in positions of leadership, that whatever, you know, agreements that we make, that whatever covenants that we make, that whatever work that we do can affect the welfare, the well-being of our children, of our answer, of our descendants. So this is point number one, and it's very, very clear. And how about Jephthah himself? The daughter was not the one who was making a vow to God, but listen, she had to, you know, to face it. So Jephthah made also a vow, which vow affected his daughter. And this is something that actually we need to pick lessons from. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God help us to see something through Jephthah's life. In this Finding God series, that actually we may, you know, we may be grounded into doing good, acting good, behaving good, doing something that actually will bring blessing on our, you know, on our descendants, on those that will come after us, whether we are parents or we are leaders, because there are some agreements that we enter into as leaders, but then they affect those that come after us. Innocent ones, really. And so Jephthah gives us a lesson, friends. Jephthah gives us a lesson that actually we need to, you know, to, 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 to learn a lot more from. Now, point number two that I want to make is God sees potential in people. And we get shocked when God uses them. Now, Jephthah here, a son of a prostitute. And from time immemorial, many things had happened. And even in this one, we have talked about many, many people whose backgrounds were fake. His, whose backgrounds were not known. But God raised them up. And they became great men and women and served. And we have talked about a number of them. And Jephthah is another one. Meaning, actually, the repetitiveness of this matter indicates that God can raise anyone. That God can use anyone. And so I'm using the word repetitiveness because we have talked about Deborah. We have talked about Ehud. We have talked about many, many, many. And even earlier times. And so this one is another that God can raise up someone regardless of their background. And so don't let your past to cling onto you, to haunt you. And as I said to you, I said to myself, because a lot of us have backgrounds, all of us have where we have come from. And sometimes our background clings on onto us. But we are urged to move forward, and Jephthah was moved, and was the map person who moved forward. And so we pray that God will enable us that our backgrounds, where we are born, how we are born, where we come from, even yesterday, anyway, God can make something new. God can make something fresh. And he uplifts you. And it's my prayer that he does. He did it for Jephthah. May he do it for you. He did it for Jephthah. May he do it for me. He did it for Jephthah. May he do it for, for anyone. And Jephthah's background shows us a great deal. God sees the potential in a person. Whoever they are. Whoever you are. Whoever, whatever I am. God sees potential. And the point number three is that Jephthah first seeks peaceful means. When the people chased him away, yes, he came back and he became the leader. And then he, to the Ammonites, he sent message to deliberate, to discuss with them peace first. Before he took a sword, he sent message to the leaders the war enemy, the enemy leaders that come and we reason together. So before you enter into uh, picking a sword or picking a stick or picking, will you go in for peace first? And um, until it was rejected, this is when he resorted to the sword. And this we see it in verses 12 to 28 in the book of Judges that have been reading. And so he took a sword, not as the first approach, but the first approach was peace. He became a lion, 
not as the first approach, but the first approach was a lamp piece and things like that. So we urge everyone that may we take um, the first step, the first things, the people who rush into um, harsher, I mean, let me call it, harsh um, actions before attempting something softer. Please do. Maybe the soft one will help. Even disciplining a child before you pick a stick, before you, pick, before you do anything, harsh, resort to something that is softer. Maybe God is going to change this child. Maybe God is going to change the situation. And may God help us in seeing this. So finally, it's about the vows. It's something that I want to finish with about the life of Jephthah. Now, the point that I'm making here is to be, you know, to mark the vows that we make. Before you say it, think about the repercussions. And because of the, the, the vows, the vow that Jephthah did, it led to the saddest moments in his life. You see, he beat his chest and said, oh, when the daughter came out to meet him. And so the vow that he made was a challenge. And so friends, I just want to dive very, very quickly. I know time is gone, but let's see Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 23. God urges the people of Israel not to rush into, into vows. And then he says, chapter 22, I mean 23, verse 21 says, If you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you. Okay, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you remain from vowing, eh? if you refrain from vowing, you will not be guilty of sin. You shall be careful to do what is past in your lips. For you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God and what you have promised with your mouth. So friends, this was the warning before they started and Jephthah, gives us a lesson, we have made vows. You have made vows. In the church, we make baptism of vows. Many, many vows that have followed on. In the church, you have made marriage vows. At wedding, you have vowed, you have said, till death do us part, but you have failed to fulfill. But here, that you refrain from making a vow, you are not guilty. You make a vow and you're not fulfilling it, you are guilty. So we appeal to ourselves, men and women, that actually the vows that we make have repercussions. So think about this very, very seriously. And in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1, 2, and then 4, 5, it's about vows. So friends, let us um, think through. We might have had more time to talk about the vows the promises that we make. But this verse, this man, Jephthah, teaches us a lot that before we do it, let us think about the repercussions that could be. And so, in the life of Jephthah, generally, as I close, God used this man, Jephthah, the son of the prostitute, from a lowly background, and he became the deliverer of God's people. He delivered them from aggression. And why? Because Jephthah forsook, left the idol life that actually his people were worshipping and he received the strength from the Lord. And so we pray that the Lord will enable us from the things that I've spoken about the man Jephthah, the one, the name meaning release. May God release us from what has been binding us, the past that has been clinging onto us, that we are set free and we move because Finding God is finding life. And may God enable you, like he enabled Jephthah, to become a conqueror, to become the victor. Despite his background, let not your background hold you, but set free. And then you'll serve the Lord with all your might, with all your strength, and with all your knowledge. And may God keep you, and may God continue speaking to you, reading through these portions of scripture from Jephthah, about Jephthah, judges, May God help you and see you through many more challenges from now on in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>